Hello everyone and welcome to Dynamics. This is the beginning of the course. We're starting it off. And I'll have you know we're going to be in chapter 12 for a long time. But the other thing I'll have you know is the things you learn in this first chapter you will use for the rest of the semester. It never goes away. Everything builds in this course. Okay. So what are we going to be able to do? Well, understand kinematics. How do things move around? And specifically how position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, all of that work for a particle traveling along a straight path. Other things, we're not going to do that. We never do that. Mostly going to focus on the applications right now. Okay. So right here, I have a rocket. It's going to be shooting up into space. And here's the thing. I can more or less forget that this is a rocket and just put it as a little dot. And that would still allow me to accurately look at the motion of this product, motion of this rocket. Now, that might seem strange to you because you're like, this is not at all a dot. It's not even spherical. But if the shape of something is not overall affecting its motion, we can choose to create um, act like it's a particle. There's some cases where that's really fine, like constant acceleration is great for this, and there's some cases where it's not. Um, you're going to learn about those as we go. Like, for example, if I kick a ball up in the air, definitely a particle. It's spherical. If it's spherical, you don't really have to worry about things. That ball will go up in the air and they'll come back down. Fantastic. Super easy. Not bad at all. If I were to kick a ball into the air that is also spinning very, very fast, I can no longer look at that as a particle. Actually, I have to look at it as something that has size, even though it's spherical. Reason? Magnus effect. Actually, by it spinning, it will impart velocity to the air above it and slow down the velocity the air above it, sorry, air below it and air above it, and it will actually cause lift. So we got to be careful about that. Now, for this rocket case, going back to it, the reason it works really well for us is because if we're just looking at altitude over time, not its three-dimensional path, but just like how far up it's going in time, we can look at velocity and acceleration, um, and we can more or less ignore the different um, um, the size dimensions of this rocket. And we'll still be able to use these very simple equations we're going to calculate in this section of the chapter to do so. Okay, here's another one. Sparks car is traveling along straight road. Can we treat it as a particle? The answer is yes. Yes, we can treat it as a particle. Why can we treat it as a particle? Because its size, its shape does not matter to us. Okay, it does not matter to us. When we get to kinetics, we're trying to figure out the forces and everything else. Then we start having to worrying about um, the size and shape of that vehicle. But for now, we're just looking at kinematics. It's going in a straight line. Its size and shape doesn't really matter for that straight line. Particle. Okay, so let's go over mechanics. Now, you've already taken statics, so you've already done part of this. But we're going to be going into dynamics this time. Things are going to change. So mechanics overall is simply the study of how bodies react to the forces acting on them. Now, we did statics last semester. That's the study of bodies in equilibrium, which means that the sum of the forces was always equal to zero. And now we're in dynamics, which has two different parts to it. But the biggest thing for you is the sum of the forces is no longer always equal to zero. That means we have some of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So kinematics is the first section we're going to be dealing with, which is concerned with the geometric aspects of motion. That's simply saying what's the path is taking when I kick that ball into the air. Kinetics is all about the forces. What forces are acting on that ball that got it moving into the air in the first place? So that's what we're focusing on. But for this chapter, it's all about kinematics. We switch off. We'll go kinematics, kinetics, back and forth throughout the entire semester. Okay, so we're going to stop for this time. And I'll see you all next time as we actually jump into the equations. And then we'll practice at the end with some examples. See you later. Bye-bye.